When humans finally make it into space to start exploring new planets, a standardized, unchanging language is going to become very important. Why? Because as the years progress in the thousands, or hopefully millions, if they don't have a standard way of communicating, they could forget how to talk to one another. These planetary colonies, separated perhaps by unfathomable reaches of space, will need a permanent codex written in the same language with the same rules so that they can understand each other. The question is, will that language be English? Allow me to explain. English might seem like the most likely choice for a standardized space language. That's because here in the 21st century, more than half of the internet is in English and more than half of scientific papers are published in English. In fact, according to The Atlantic, scientific papers are often published and promoted in English instead of in the author's country's respective native languages. This happens, for example, in Germany, France, Spain, and the Netherlands. They go out of their way to publish in English to make sure that their research is readable by as many scientific communities as possible. And so, as rocket science and space exploration science continue to develop, it will most likely be published in English. So it seems plausible that traveling space itself will be equipped with English language science. But we need to take a step back and realize that it hasn't always been that way. The vast, vast majority of humans and proto-humans never spoke a word of modern English. And the English language itself has changed so much over the past couple thousand years that if you had a time machine and you went back to England to try and have a conversation, you probably wouldn't be able to speak to those people at all. And space exploration, assuming that we do it right, will take far, far longer than a couple thousand years. In fact, when it came to another type of exploration, the exploration of the surface of the Earth, French used to be the go-to language. It was used for international conversations between European nations and their colonies when exploring uncharted territories and finding creative ways to get rid of the native people they found there. French was used for sharing science and negotiating war and peace between the countries that sought to divide up the planet during the age of colonialism. But today, even though French is still widely spoken, especially in the European Union, there are more than a dozen other languages with more speakers than French. And it is the widespread use of a language that makes communication possible. The more people that speak it, the more communicating you can do. Which is why English might be a good choice for space. English isn't perfect, but its use is widespread enough that we may have reached a tipping point where it is unlikely to be replaced by something else when people choose another language to supplement their native language. That is, English is extremely popular as a second language. Only about 360 million people speak English as their first language. And in terms of the percentage of all people that speak it as a first language, it is actually shrinking because of rapid population growth in other countries. But an additional 1.1 billion or more people speak English as a non-first language. And it is these people, the global speakers of English, that are the most important to consider when thinking about the future of the language. According to the Washington Post, English is the most widely studied foreign language, followed in second place by French. Also good news for English is that the number of people who speak more than one language continues to increase, and English is often seen as a good choice for an additional language. Interestingly, multiple people have tried to simplify English by picking out only certain words to teach, claiming that you really only need one or two thousand words in order to communicate with English effectively. Many simplified subsets of English have been created, including Basic English, Special English, and Globish. These have been used, for example, to create a Wikipedia encyclopedia called Simple English Wikipedia. So we know that they could work. But what if we don't want to choose English? What other language would we choose? Well, the only language that can compete in terms of sheer numbers is Mandarin Chinese. More than a billion people speak Mandarin Chinese, but if you don't already do so, learning can be extremely difficult because of the tonal nature of the language. Mandarin Chinese is widely considered one of the hardest languages to acquire as a second language. But for many people alive today, it would be a great choice for the language of space. 
As one hypothetical example, the futuristic sci-fi western television series Firefly imagined a universe in which planet colonies spoke a mix of English and Chinese. A future language solution such as this may not be that implausible. The next language for consideration in terms of sheer numbers would be Spanish, with around 400 million native speakers and hundreds of millions more with some knowledge of the language. Spanish is useful to know in a number of countries, but it doesn't carry the same sheer weight of numbers of speakers as does English, and it is unlikely to catch up before a decision is made about the language to be used for interstellar space travel. Plus, Spanish hasn't been used that much in relation to space travel. But if we're talking about precedent, that is, what languages have been used in space already, then we need to consider Russian. You might not know this, but Russian is a required language to learn for any astronaut on the International Space Station. And not only that, but along with America, Russia and what used to be the Soviet Union are responsible for the vast majority of spaceflight in history. And so, when it comes to languages spoken in space, English and Russian have a head start. But multiple astronauts from different countries have described the process of learning Russian as super extra difficult, so maybe we should pick something simpler. Well, if it's simple that we want, we could choose an artificial language built specifically for that purpose. In fact, there have been multiple efforts to create a language that is simple enough for everyone to learn it. The most well-known effort is called Esperanto, and proponents say that you can learn it in just a few months because the rules of the language are consistent. If you know how a word is spelled, you can pronounce it, and there are no word genders or conjugations. People may argue that Esperanto is just some made-up language, but that's true for all languages when you think about it. And Esperanto was specifically designed to be easy to learn and communicate with, so why not? Well, unfortunately, it seems like Esperanto will not become the language of the future due to the sheer number of people that would have to learn it and the cooperation that we would need from world governments and diverse groups of people. Much of the work needed to spread language is organic in nature, and trying to force it on people is going to be met with backlash. Because English is already so widespread, it seems like the best choice to continue spreading. Of course, we don't know if English itself won't continue to morph into some kind of future English. Languages evolve as you use them. But what's changed recently about English in the past hundred years or so is that we've mostly standardized its writing, thanks to the efforts of dictionaries and the permanent communication records that we keep. Languages of the past had a much easier time evolving because of their fluid nature and being rarely written down. There's no reason to expect English to stop evolving completely, but the process will probably be remarkably slow compared to the first few thousand years of language. But pronunciation is not neatly tied to spelling, and so the way that we speak words may continue to change. Future people may have accents to their speaking that we've never heard before. And the introduction of nearly instant communication methods has created a market for new shorthand and slang categories, allowing the continued adaptation of the language to its users. Imagine one day receiving a message from a distant spaceship and being completely unable to decipher its accent and acronyms. That could be the future if we fail to standardize a space language. So, what do you think? Should English be the language of space? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this episode of Art Explains, and I'll see you next time.